All right, so today's video is going to be about master detail views. Now, this is a very common uh, abstraction that you'll see on websites where they provide a list of items, products, people, whatever, and then you click on one of those items to see the details about that thing, whatever it is. So I've got a simple little example. This is the finished version, just so you can visualize what we're building. So here's the list. These are my items, but I'm only seeing the name for each one of these items. And if I click on this, say the cheddar one, we click on this, we go to a details view. Now this can be two separate pages or it can be done all on the same page. So back to my full list. I'm doing this all on the same page. You can see the page name doesn't change here at the top as I'm going back and forth, but it doesn't matter which one of these links that I'm clicking on. What it's doing is it's writing a query string. So question mark and then name equals value. I chose PID for product ID, but it could have been anything. As the developer, I get to choose what I want to put up there in the query string. So I'm going to say PID, this is my acronym that refers to my product ID equals, and then three is the product ID for the EDAM cheese. If I go to mozzarella, PID equals one. Now, if you want to follow along with this, uh, there's a link down in the description for the a product um, table from my MySQL database. That is this one right here. So product ID, product name, category name, product price, product unit. If I browse, there's all the data. So if you want a copy of that to add to your own PHP MyAdmin database, go right ahead. The SQL file is in that code just that's linked to down in the description. Okay, so let's build this thing. Now, we have to connect to a database. So just like in my previous PHP videos, I am using this include to connect to my database. I've got an error, so if this fails, nothing on the page is going to work. I'm doing require once and I'm throwing an error if it fails, so it has to include the page one time, and if it fails, it's going to die. If it does work and it includes the file, but the connection to the database fails, this is going to throw an error and then nothing else is going to happen here. So if we see anything in our web page, it means that we connected. Now up at the top, this is where I'm going to decide because I decided to do this on one single page, I need a way of knowing, am I looking at the full list or am I looking at the details view? So I'm looking to see inside get. So basically my query string. Is there something in my query string called PID? That's what the isSet function does. It determines if a variable is declared, it's created. So inside of get, is there something called PID? Yes. Okay. Now I'm using the check type function to see if it's digits. So is this a numeric value? If both things are true, then I'm going to show the details. Otherwise, I'm going to show the full list. Now I'm going to sort of want to replicate this function knowing if I'm looking at the full list or the details list down inside the main body. But instead of doing all this, instead of doing these if statements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable up here. I'm going to create it just called is full list. And by default, set that to true. Meaning by default, when I come to this page, I'm going to be showing the full list. Now, if I check this, and I see that, hey, you do have a PID there. So that means I don't want to show the full list. So I'm going to change my variable and set it to false if that's the case. Then down inside the body, I can do that same thing right here. So if is full list, so if that is true, I'm going to show my entire list. Otherwise, I'm going to show the details of one product. And then at the very bottom, I'm going to have a link back to the page that I'm currently on, my master detail md.php. This page, this link shows up if his full list is uh, false. So we'll refresh this. Okay, so we didn't have it. So we're on the full list. If I do PID equals seven, there we go. Now, we're on the same page, it's still the same page, but we're looking at details and here's the link to go back and it just takes us to md.php without any query string. And it could be any value at all. Now I can take any number and stick it inside there 
doesn't mean that the product exists in the database. It just means that I've passed a numeric value through the query string. I'm going to be needing to handle the fact that it's valid or not in my code. But right now, all I care about is, is it a numeric value? Okay. So we have that. Now up at the top, once I have this thing, I do have a PID. I'm going to grab that value. So we will use intval. It's like in JavaScript, parse int in PHP intval. We're going to take whatever this string is, the PID, and we're going to actually cast it from a string into a number. So now I've got a numeric value and we will set up our query string, I'm sorry, not a query string, our SQL string. So very basic query from products where product ID is, and we're going to use prepared statements just like I did in my previous video. So you can click on the link there at the top if you don't know how P PDO and prepared statements worked. I've got a video on that. Okay, so there is our selection. If we're going to look at details, the product ID is going to match whatever this number is. We're going to prepare the statement and then execute it, passing in the array of values for the question marks. PID is this number. And this should come back with a single row. So this should get us one item, a record set with one row that includes product ID, product name, I believe category name, product price, and product unit. Pretty sure those are the, the columns. So these are the different parts that are going to come back in a single row in our record set. Full list, same sort of idea. I'll do this. And I'm going to use the same variable names here because I'm going to use them down below. This prepared object, regardless of which one of these it is but we do not need to filter. We're just going to say, hey, give me all the products. And there is nothing inside the array that's being passed in. It's an empty array that gets passed in when you don't have any parameters. Okay, so we have it. Filtered list, full list. Now, this prepared object that we've created in both places, we can use that down here. If I want to see the list of all of the products, we should check to make sure that there actually are products. I mean, it is possible that the query of all products brought back nothing. So we will take a look at that. So prepared, we'll use the row count function. If it's greater than zero, there are some products else, no products. If there are, then we're just going to loop through them. So we will set up our fetch mode to say that we do want it back using the column names. So we'll set it to PDO fetch associated associative. And then we're going to loop. Each time we call fetch, we're going to be getting a single row that comes back. And for that row, all we're going to do is we're going to display the name of the product and then a link. Now I've already got some CSS set up. Uh, so there's a couple class names I'm going to use. The line class, all that's going to do is put a little dotted underline beneath it. And all I care about displaying is the product name. Then we want to have an anchor tag. Now this anchor tag, we need to point to the page that we're currently on, but we need to pass through 
the product ID. And this is how the master detail thing works, is for each row that we're looping through, yeah, we're displaying the product name, we're coming back, we're reloading the current page, but I have to get the product ID for the current row and put it right here. So that's how we put it into the query string. So inside of here, row product ID, just like that. And for each one, I'm just gonna write out view details. Close that off. And inside my anchor tag, I'm also gonna add a class name here to make it look like a button. It is still actually a link, but this class BTN, this is something that I've defined in the CSS, which is in the code gist. Okay, so we have this full list. We're writing out the product name, and then we're writing out the word view details, view details, sorry. And we'll have to close off our paragraph here that we're opening. This button is going to have for its href, the product ID is going to be embedded inside there. So let's take a look at this page now. Let's go back to the full product list. And there we have it. There's all of our products listed. And each one of these, so if I click on it, PID is one. Back to the list, two. That's four. Our Venezuelan beaver cheese, six. So we're getting that product ID being passed in. And if I look at the HTML that's being generated, we can see inside of here, let's zoom in a little bit. Classes button, href md.php, question mark, PID equals one. And if we look in the next one, the PID is two. Down here at the bottom, PID is six. So we're passing it through, regardless of which one we click on, we've got this working. And we can go back the link that was already there. So now we have to figure out the details. All right, so in our second section here. So the first one is full list. That's where we generated the list of all the products. Now here, we, we can do the same thing. We can say while and do a while loop, but we know that it's only going to be one single link. But we don't know, is there a match or isn't there a match? So we still need to do that. We'll say if prepared, row count greater than zero. So there's no match in this second part. No match? Well, we'll just display a message to that effect. Same thing as we did right here. No product match available. So we're telling the user that something is not oh, echo. There we go. We're telling the user that there's something that's not right. There's no match for the ID that they've provided. All right, and then we do have a match. This is what we normally put inside the while loop. Like right here, we said, in our while loop, we use row equals prepared fetch. Since I know that I should only ever have one match, I can do this. Now, I've called it one time. Now, something that would be even better, better security for yourself is changing this to say, instead of if it's greater than zero, I want one single match. There should only be one match. And if there's anything other than one match, we can say this. So this protects you if there was some sort of SQL injection attack that you hadn't protected yourself against. I mean, we're using PDO, so we're pretty safe. But if there was something else that went wrong, we're knowing that we know that we're only going to display it if there was one single match for the query statement that we ran. Once we have that, now we can write out those details. And I'm going to write out in the first row, not just the name, but I'll also write out the uh, product unit. 
which was the size like one kilogram, 500 grams, something like that. So say price, and this is going to be category name. And then we can just scrap that, scrap that. There we go. So we're writing out the name and the product unit in the first line, then the product price, and then the category name. And that's all we need to do. So let's go check that out. We've got PID equals two. We're on the details page right now. So product ID is two. If I refresh this, there we go. There's cheddar. There's the name, there's the unit, there's the price, there's the category, back to the full list. And this will work for all of them. So it's one web page that now works for all the products that we have inside of our database. We can display the full list or any of the details of any one product using one single page. So hope that helps clear up any confusion that you had about master detail views and how those can be put together and how you can do that in, even in a single web page. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.